TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live though. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this channel right here, this is where you can catch any of the highlights and things of that nature. We also got merch, I'm wearing it right now. Appreciate everybody who did purchase some. And even if you take a look at this and don't buy it, I still appreciate the looks, the eyes. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget, we do got the Patreon. This is where we, you can't watch stuff on YouTube. I mean, YouTube, we post it on the Patreon. All right. This is Ape Honcho. Oh, yeah. The link to all of that is down in the description. It's under another link. It's called Linktree. You click that Linktree, and it takes you to all my socials and any, everything else. This is by Ape Honcho. Two months, six months ago, man, M's girlfriend, and then jerks off to corn. This is a sad situation, but that is funny as hell. <laughs> oh man, let's get into it. Uh, R.I.P. to everybody who lost their life. Hi, is that Ross? It is Ross, yeah. Hi, Ross. My name's Mia. I'm a police officer with uh, Warwickshire Police. Hello. Um, we've just come to your mum and dad's house. Um, we're just looking for Megan. She's been reported missing. Have you well, seen her yeah. at all? She came on Friday. I've been, talk I've been trying to call her, though. Have um, you? She came, on she came on Friday for about an hour. Yeah. Then she... She left about nine-ish. Okay. I went to went to McDonald's. Yeah. And then she just gave me a call or a text when she got in. She never that's 30 year old lab technician Ross McCullum talking with a Warwickshire police officer in reference to 23 year old Megan Nubra. 30 year old still living at his mom and dad's house. Lab tech. These are all red flags. Who had been reported missing a short while earlier on that very same day. Although Ross gives a story about his and Megan's whereabouts on the Friday that had just passed, police suspect that he's keeping something from them as he had been the last known person in contact with her. What Ross didn't know was that by the time this call had been made, police had already accessed Megan's mobile phone, which had been located in some undergrowth off Hermitage Road in the village of Whitwick, Leicestershire. All evidence at this point led to Ross knowing more than he was letting on. Best Damn, description for Doris. Immediately? <laughs> you feel me? Alright. Believe it or not, Ross and Megan didn't know of each other's existence prior to June of 2021. But that was all due to change when Megan was about to do an audit in a laboratory I at her workplace, that. Ibstock Brick, a brick manufacturer in northwest Leicestershire. Megan, who had recently joined the company's HR department, along with some others, had been carrying out a data protection and privacy assessment involving paperwork and files stored once again in the company's laboratory. It was here the two crossed paths for the very first. Well, isn't that against HR standards? Working time. To say they got on like a house on fire would be an understatement. This is what Joe Howard, a senior lab technician, had to say in regards to the pair's relationship only weeks after they had first met. There was a time I observed Ross and Megan at work throughout July of 2021. Megan would come into the lab and they were almost acting like a couple. On occasion, I caught them hugging and kissing in the lab itself. Ross was a reliable worker. However, around the time he started seeing Megan, his behavior changed. I assumed that he had stop taking his ADHD medication. He had done it in the past, so I recognized the behavior. Immaturity and teenage-like would be the best way to describe it. He became boisterous, swearing at people and using highly inappropriate language. It isn't clear why Ross stopped, but certain ADHD medication can lead to problems in the bedroom. So I'll leave you to put two and two together, seeing as a new relationship had started to develop. Makes sense. Like, but she's an HR. What is... It's a, I know HR in America, they like, they like the people you call if you're having problems with people like looking at you at work or touching you at work or, or saying things that are not appropriate at work. 
Yeah, so you're having a whole, y'all having a whole relationship. Other than the testimony from Joe Howard, there isn't any other public sources to paint a picture of what the pair were like at work. The same could be said for outside of work. Megan's family nor Ross's were aware of how close the two were. It wasn't kept a secret, but it wasn't serious enough for their families to know of their presence. That was all about to change on the 7th of August 2021 though, and when the families were finally aware that the two were an item, one would be dead, the other facing decades in jail. Friday the 6th of August 2021 was like no other for Megan. Wake up go to work, come home, and enjoy the weekend. Nothing in particular was planned for that summer's evening. She was going to spend some time at home with her parents. That's where she lived. However, that would all change when she received a text message from Ross. Hey, hey. if you are editing your own videos, this is above average. <laughs> you going crazy. Want to meet up at mine tonight? My parents aren't home. So she got ready and told her family she was off for a walk down the park with a man from work that she called Ross, and off she went. But as you know, she wasn't going to the park, she was heading to Ross's home. This is the last time she would ever be seen alive on camera. That's crazy, she look happy, getting in a little Fiat. Shortly after 8pm, Megan arrived at Ross's home in Colville, Leicestershire, a stone's throw away from Ibstock Brick. We don't know any specifics of what happened when she arrived, but what we do know is that within the first 40 minutes, yes, the first 40 minutes, she would be attacked by Ross McCullum in the front room, an attack that would leave her dead. He had strangled her, but to make sure the job was finished, he wielded a knife from the kitchen and hacked away at her neck in an attempt to decapitate her. He failed in doing so, but caused 14 stab wounds in the process now you might be scratching your head thinking to yourself why how why why oh, it seems that ross might have been hiding something away from everyone a sick fantasy that eventually played out when megan arrived his actions following her death lay out his true intentions and even a potential to go on to kill again an initial cleanup of the front room was underway. Using bed sheets and towels, he cleaned up as much of the crime scene as he could before discreetly placing Megan back into her own car, along with a bunch of personal items and everything used in the murder. In the midst of attempting to shift all the physical evidence away from his parents' home, Ross called Megan's phone various times and left messages to distance himself further. Just prior to 9 p.m., Ross left his parents' home on winter clothes and headed in the direction of Loughborough College. Phone analysis would reveal that at around 9.04 p.m., Megan's phone first entered Hermitage Road, roughly one mile away. It wouldn't leave that location. Over the next 20 minutes or so, Ross continued his journey towards Loughborough College, passing by Charlie Road, and it was here Megan's body was removed from her car and thrown over a four-foot brick wall. At 9.51 p.m., the car arrived at its final destination, Loughborough College's fitness centre car park. However well he thought his plan was going up until this point, Point, it would make no difference because as soon as he it's not going well at all he entered the grounds he would be caught on cctv right. when he arrived it said cc terrible idea the tv footage would also capture the moments he disposed the rest of the heavily blood-soaked evidence in nearby bins along with him getting changed into some new clothes we'll never stood a chance in trial i hope he got a life sentence Minimum 27, because I know y'all like to do minimums. At least give my high minimum. We still need motive. Like, what was... Why, why would he do that? And how do we know he did that? Like, the, 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 the corn part. The, the jerk. You're a jerk. I know. How long is this footage? Okay, he does some other stuff too. Okay. He's back out. Shirt too little. This is a terrible plan. I. <laughs>
it don't even seem like he had any thoughts of camera. And I feel like in the UK when it's an M, like there's there's cameras everywhere. Like they're gonna see you driving her car on roads. They're gonna look back on the path you took. All type of stuff. He did all this for nothing to get caught. I love shopping the real real. Did he at least burn the stuff or no? You just spreading the clothes out? Oh, he putting it in a big dumpster? Oh, he putting it underneath, on all around. Still stupid. Camera, the camera's literally following you. Somebody in a desk in the in the school is like, "What the heck is going on?" Follow him. It's strange to think that a man who would attempt to outsmart the eventual police investigation would be so outlandish to dispose of the evidence in At such a, a public place. Maybe it was the fact that the summer holiday was fully underway, so next to no one would be in attendance at the college. Or maybe his ego was so inflated he thought that making it so <coughs> obvious would make the evidence harder to find. But... As you will soon find out, determined family members and detectives would solve this case within days. What a surprise. Leaving the college grounds, Ross made his way towards Loughborough Town Centre, a rough 15 minute walk. From here, he called for a taxi and made his way home. In a final bid to attempt to cover his tracks, he made one last phone call, leaving this voice message. Help, babe, it's Ross. Um, what, I'm just worried about you. I haven't rang back. Well, you know, text me or anything. Um, well, no, it's probably nothing. Probably be friends dead or he fell asleep. But uh, yeah, I'm just worried, that's all. I had a fun time earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bro, crazy. To do this knowing that you did what you did? Talking about I had a fun time earlier. Haha. <laughs> like, what What you mean by that? Like, that's cynical in itself. Okay. Ross showed no remorse in the fallout of the murder. From attempting to dispose of the evidence to leaving a nefarious voicemail, his actions up until this point showed that he was a cold-hearted killer, with some experts believing he could go on to kill again. Take a listen to what he did when he arrived back home and see what conclusion you come to. For roughly two hours after that voicemail was left, Ross began to browse the internet for serial killers and murderers, just upstairs from the room where he murdered Megan only hours earlier. But thoughts of getting caught also crossed his mind. Who cut your hair in prison and how much do you pay? You could say then that his internet usage was a glimpse into his sick, twisted mind. After soaking up all the content, you giving them a whole internet trail for everything, like cryptic print, whatever you call it. Relating to murder, he opened up a poor website of the extreme kind. Analysis of his PC showed that he was on there for roughly 17 minutes. I think we all know what took place over those months. <laughs> Bro was searching for the he was searching for the right he was searching for the right one for 16 minutes and then one minute of bliss is crazy. As the sun began to rise on August 7th, 2021, John Nubra, Megan's brother, received a frantic phone call from his parents. Have you seen Megan? She said she was only going out for a few hours with someone called Ross from work. Calm down, calm down. I'll give her a call now. Worried but trying to keep a level head, John sprung into action. 
first calling Megan's phone, but to no avail. So he, along with was one of eight? Megan's friends, drove to Ibstock. Remember, that's where her workplace was, in a bid to at best locate her car. Once again, efforts failed. The Warwickshire police were informed of Megan's disappearance, and as some of you may know, with Megan being a non-vulnerable adult, they wouldn't get involved in a search at first, but they did assist with family inquiries. After AMPR leads were followed, the police alerted Megan's family that her car had been spotted on one of their cameras on Nanpanton Road. This would have been minutes after Megan's body had been dumped. See what I'm saying? Car spotted on Nanpanton Road one of their cameras on Nanpanton Road. This would have been minutes after Megan's body had been dumped on Hermitage Road. So, John made his way over to Nanpanton Road. He canvassed the area, but there was still no sign of her car. Exhausting his search efforts, he switched tactics and decided to locate her phone instead. As you know, hours on from her disappearance, it was still turned on because it was ringing. However, there was a slight problem. After contacting Apple to see if they could locate Megan's phone, John was told that the team who specializes in doing so weren't going to be in until Monday the 9th. But after figuring out he could do it himself via Megan's iCloud login details, there was finally yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. case. A signal had been emitted from a country lane, you guessed it, Hermitage Road. Family and friends rushed to the area to find the phone, but the location wasn't specific, so it wasn't going to be an easy job. The Warwickshire police were called in for assistance. <coughs> the search went on for hours, but it was eventually found by a police officer deep inside a large overgrown hedge, surrounded by brambles at the side of a field. When police managed to get into the phone, there were tens of messages and calls from none other than Ross McCullum. This new revelation, along with the name Ross, being mentioned to police as the man Megan was going to meet just before she went off the radar meant he was the number one suspect. Initially, a kidnapping inquiry was opened, and it wouldn't take police long before they could locate Ross. A quick look through the chat history showed that the pair had worked with each other, so off the police went to Ibstock Brick and obtained Ross's personal details. By 6.45pm on Saturday the 7th of August 2021, less than a day on from when Megan was last seen, police attended Ross's home address to take him in for questioning. However, he wasn't home at the time. Hi, is that Ross? Hi, it is Ross, yeah. Hi, Ross. My name's Mia. I'm a police officer with uh, Warwickshire Police. Hello. Um, we've just come to your mum and dad's house. Um, we're just looking for Megan. She's been reported missing. Have you well, seen her yeah. at all? She came on Friday. I've been, talk I've been trying to call her, though. Have um, you? She came, on she came on Friday for about an hour. Yeah. Then she, she, she left about nine-ish. Okay. I went to went to McDonald's. Yeah. And then she said she could be a call or a text when she got home. She never she never did. She never did. Okay. Um so The fact that his speech is not stuttered, slurred, slowed, nothing. Dude is crazy. You haven't seen her since yesterday about was it half nine you said? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay. And where are you at the moment? I'm in Loughborough right now. You're in Loughborough. Okay, what are you up to yeah. in Loughborough? Sorry? What are you up to in Loughborough? I'm just having a few drinks in Loughborough. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. No worries. Um, whereabouts are you? Um, you know where the question is? Um, I'm a... At this point, he getting nervous. Where about are you? He was, um, what? A Warwick Shroffs, so I have no idea whereabouts uh, anything is, but uh, I can sure find it. Is it the Griffin, it's is right, it? It's right next to, right to Sainsbury. Okay. Near the Sainsbury. Do you know the road name or anything like that? Um, I don't, if I'm honest with you, I'm walking down there now as we speak. Yeah. But, are you in a are you in a relationship, you and Megan? Yeah, well, yeah, we've been seeing each other. She's HR at work. I work with her. Yeah. Um, we've been seeing each other. Yeah. For like about a month, and uh, we're glad we're out this weekend. Yeah. Never, never. This, I learned this young, bro. Never get into a relationship with somebody you work with anyway. Let's just let's just x that out. Do not F-U-C-K your co-workers. It's not going to end well in any way. I don't know. I had a mum and dad out the house. I was supposed to be going around, but she never turned up today. I was supposed to be 
Right. And did she say anything of where she might be going or where she might be? She said she was going to go to. She's going to go to McDonald's on my own to get like a vanilla milkshake. Yeah. That's it. And she didn't say where she'd be going today, all she said is that she'd meet you. Well, no, she said she, said she couldn't stop mine. She was going to stop last night, around mine, but she said she couldn't. Um, what? How so come she didn't stop? Just... Is he just making this up on the fly? Just being nosy. Sorry? Bear with me one second, sorry. My sergeant's just ringing. Go ahead, Sarge. Okay. The Sarge saying. Will do, no worries. I'm just speaking to Ross on the phone at the moment. Um, I'll give you an update shortly. Yeah, already done. Yeah. At this point, she just, hold on. She just asking questions. I feel like they already got their uh, answer. Like, you know how you just see, if, like, you just ask somebody, you know, you know why you know somebody lying already before you even approach them? And you just ask questions to see if they're going to lie about it and how deep the lie going to go and how good or, or, or bad of a liar they are. And then you'd be like in your head like, dang, if I didn't know you had already did that, I would have thought you was telling the truth. Like, I feel like it's one of them situations for Officer Nice because she's extremely nice. <laughs> She was, go ahead, Sarge. My bad. Come on, let's focus. Sorry, Ross. <laughs> so, uh, just my sergeant ringing me. Um, so, she said that she couldn't stop last night. Did she say why she couldn't stop? No, well, when I texted her to say if she wanted to, she said she uh, couldn't. She never went into detail, no. She just said she couldn't stop. And then she came round after I that. Think, I, I think, because everyone that didn't know that I was going to be coming round. Okay. And I don't think she... Um, Wanted them to die. Okay. Well, have, we have we not heard anything from her at all? Nothing at all. I've sent her about, I'm trying to really creep I've sent her about 15 WhatsApp messages. Or she said she was going to call me when she got home or text me or something. I've sent her loads of like, WhatsApp and like, I've rang up loads. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you're obviously worried about her. Yeah. But mm. no, she's on she's lovely. She has a work with her. She's taking charge. She's Really nice person. Yeah. I am really worried. Have you known her for a long time? I've known her for a couple of years. Um, then we started to see They're good because the lawyer was right. Because the way that he's selling all of this, like, he's definitely, like, I get the feeling, like, if they wouldn't have called him, like, he's definitely, like, we'll do it again. Because he's too comfortable. He's too comfortable. Like, he's not stuttering. He's not anxious. He's not overdoing. Like, he's just right in the groove. Like, like, this is just an acting job for him or something. Each other. I'd say more like yeah. three months ago. Yeah. Like three months ago, we really started seeing each other. Yeah. So then when we started, um, it was going to come quite... Well, she's got a house in Ipstock, and it was going to be... It's going to be a bit more serious, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, do you know if she... I mean, I know you say you've gone to Loughborough. Does she know anybody in Loughborough? Not that I'm aware of, maybe. I don't know. She has, she's got loads of friends, I don't know. Not, not that you're aware no. of. Okay. Um, Okie dokie. And. Do, 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 do. What vehicle do you drive, Ross? Sorry? What vehicle do you drive? My what, company. What, no, what car do you drive? I don't drive. You don't drive? Okay. No, I don't have, I don't have to drive. Oh, bless you. Okay. Um, I mean, I appreciate I've probably ruined your night out now by worrying you. Um, no, honestly, I was worried anyway. I wasn't really on the top of night out or whatever. No. I was trying to get out. I was really like, worried earlier. I was probably yeah. all dead up. Yeah. Okay. It's not my like good to do. It's, not, it's really, I don't know if you spoke to the family. It's not like it to do this. No, they're, they're really worried about her as well. Um, yeah. So. Like a like you know how like you meet a compulsive liar or like a compulsive thief like the type of thief that'll steal something from you and help you look for it 
like this is him. This is like this is just this is this guy, and that's how that's why they know that, that he had the ability to do it again. Like he's unwavered. <laughs> okay, um, are you planning on coming home soon? No, I'll be, I'll be home tonight. Um, I can, well, I can go. I'm at Sainsbury's now. You're at Sainsbury's now. Okay. In Loughborough. Okay. All right then. Um, if you were mine, I've just got some other bits to do. I need to speak to my control room and stuff like that. Are you planning okay. on staying there for a bit then? Are you? I can come back whenever you want me to. I can just get, I can get a taxi, or my, my dad can bring me home. Yeah. Um, let me give you a ring in five minutes. I just need to sort some details out and stuff, and um, I'll give you a ring back if that's okay, Ross. Okay, thank you. Ross out there trying to enjoy his last night as a free man. Great. All right, no worries. I'll speak to you shortly. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Ross's father arranged for him to be picked up from Loughborough later on that evening, and by 11:30 p.m., police were once again back at the address to take Ross in for questioning. What initially began with a kidnap inquiry would soon turn into a murder investigation though after Ross made this confession to police. I'm DC Gallagher from Warwickshire Police. Um, at this moment in time, we have reason to suspect your involvement in the disappearance of Megan Newbury. Uh, and as a result, I'm arresting you on suspicion of kidnap. So you do not have to say anything. In it. And it may have a defense. If you don't mention one question, something which you may later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. So I'm just going to pop some handcuffs on you, all right? You can, I'll put these on first. Yeah. Is that the penguin candy shirt he got on? Can you, I can't see it behind me. Is that it? Yeah, that's fine, no worries. Can you feel that, yeah? Yeah. We've got a bit of room in it. Okay. In relation to Megan, can you tell us where she is? Itchy ears, tell them. You got something in your ear? What is it? Okay. Ross, in relation to Megan, can you tell us where she is? Say again. Talk down the police station. Can you tell us can you tell us here? Just quiet. Um, just Woodhouse Eaves. Woodhouse Eaves. What is that? Near Loughborough. Near Loughborough. What is it though? It's what kind of location is it? It's on Charlie Road. Charlie Road. Whereabouts? In the labour, okay. Is she alive? The officer's okay. not getting what he's saying. Okay. Right, do you want to come with us? Yeah. Okay. Is she alive? No. Okay. Right, do you want to come with us? Yeah. Did that officer just have one leopard print? What is going on? Yeah, she's hidden by all the leaves at the minute. It's Steph, mate. Drive down, found her. Um, if you get a chance, can you point to one side of the she's going to be alive? And your supervisor. Yeah, um, just let her know where we are. Low key, if he didn't admit, like, this would have been a hard find, right? Um, just drive straight down the road to where we stopped. Three, four. Just cancel my panic alarm now, please. Just down here, Sergeant. See your legs. legs. Oh. Looks like she has a lot of top on. So, you need a suit. A tux even? Maybe I don't need a suit. I ain't wore a suit since ever. I don't think I ever put a suit on in my life. Like, yes, I did. For, like, eighth grade graduation.
It isn't clear whether Ross told police where Megan's car was, but only three hours after being arrested, the car was located. Given all the evidence stacked up against him and his own confession of knowing where Megan's dead body was, it led to a murder charge being placed against Ross. However, only weeks later, he would go on to plead guilty to manslaughter on the grounds that he lashed out at Megan as the result of a court encounter. This in turn triggered an episode of PTSD, which would be his defense when the trial swung around because if you didn't guess it by now, that plea wasn't accepted by the prosecution no. and so he would have to go on trial. In a nutshell, Ross's defense, as you've just heard, was that an episode of PTSD led him to kill Megan. He and y'all believe this? said the PTSD emerged due to him being warped multiple times as a young teenager. One of the perpetrators, allegedly Stephen Beadman. Stephen had been handed a life sentence back in 2016 for the rape and murder of 15-year-old schoolgirl Kaylee Haywood. This story was actually corroborated by a work colleague at the trial. Six months before the murder took place, Ross opened up to him to tell him what had happened. Nothing specific, but just the fact that he was warped as a young teenager. However, Stephen died due to a cardiac arrest in 2021, so he was never taken in for questioning in relation to this case, nor would he have gone on trial. It took the jury just 91 minutes to find Ross guilty of Megan's murder. He would go on to be sentenced to life with the minimum term of 23 years in prison. I think it's clear to see that Ross had- He's gonna be out at 53, that's crazy. Innocent girl life taken, he's out 53. Like these life, the sentencing will never get unamazing to me. Like, this is the dumbest level of sentencing. Oh. Some kind of goal to attempt to become Britain's next serial killer. His actions after the murder back this theory. Sadly, Megan would have to fall victim in order for Ross to be caught though, and you can thank his sloppy decision making for that. Believe it or not, the police actually said, had it not been for Ross leaving the phone on and telling them where the body was, they more than likely would have never found any of them, or if they did, it would be years down the line. I would like to That's the same thing I just said. Like, if they wouldn't have found, if he wouldn't have told them where it was, they would never do on finding it. Start by thanking our incredible family, friends, and everyone who has offered love and support over these difficult 16 months. I'd also like to thank the prosecution barristers, Mr. Kamei and Mr. Pryor, as well as DI Jenny Heggs, DC Charlotte Mee, and DC Carrie Potter, the family. along with the office. It's a feeling I will as a sister. Megan will never leave our thoughts. Meg was an exceptional person through and through. She was and is loved by all who knew her and was nothing but pleasant to those she came into contact with. She had a whole life ahead of her. She was about to buy her first home and was excited for everything she had coming up. She was so eager to start the rest of her life, she ended up losing the one she was living. R.I.P, man. IP man, it's crazy man. I'm scared to raise my daughter in this world, man. I gotta do it, but I, you know what I'm saying? But it's weirdos like this guy out there, and I'm some unlimited amount of weirdos out here. So all you can do is just hope to give them that third eye. Like pay attention, never lack. Always keep your eyes on. Never ease up. Like I don't know, man. 2023 on Earth is a scary time. See y'all leave a like, comment, I'm gone.